What's going on everyone? Another hunting season has come and gone. 2022 is upon us and I'm out doing some postseason scouting on a piece of property that I actually had the biggest deer I've ever had on trail camera. So I am trying to learn a little bit more about where he spent his time in the fall. So as I'm doing that, I'm also going to be pulling some of the trail camera sets that actually captured that deer's picture and some of the other cameras that I have on this property. And the goal today is to analyze the physical trail camera set and determine if I need to make any improvements because next year, most likely, I'm gonna be hunting this deer again and I'm going to have my cameras in the same locations that I got him on camera last year. So I wanna make sure that I'm optimizing my trail camera sets because the goal is to gather as much data as possible. In today's video, I'm going to cover five reasons you need to improve your trail camera game. So I'm at trail camera location number one, and this particular camera set is a cell camera set. And one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of deer are noticing this camera. So the first thing that I want to analyze is the physical camera set and pick out why these deer may be picking out this camera. You know, there's a lot of information kind of surfacing around cell cameras specifically spooking deer because it's the belief that deer can actually feel the RF. And that's just simply not true. We have some more content on uh, why your cameras may be spooking deer. And this particular camera set, I did not do a good job at hiding the camera and following the spook proof equation. So if you find yourself in this situation and you have deer noticing your cameras, follow these three simple steps and that could improve your trail camera game. So number one, use a tree that is larger than the diameter or the profile of the camera. You can see behind me here, that camera is simply larger than the tree that it's on the profile sticks out thus making it look out of place and deer can pick that off so number one use a tree that is larger than the diameter of the camera also with this camera setup as you can see here it's the same height as my head so it is directly in the eyesight or the line of vision of deer and of other people so this camera is going to be easily picked out so I might want to adjust this camera next year to be a little bit higher. Maybe I'll put it up in here and that could get it out of the line of sight. So the next thing to look for is the height of the camera. You wanna hang them around six to eight feet. That seems to be the sweet spot. That's out of the direct line of sight of deer and of people. So the third thing that I did wrong on this physical camera set is I used a strap, a camera strap, two inch nylon strap. And that is what comes standard with the Exodus cameras. And if you can help it at all, ditch the strap, use some paracord and your cameras will be less noticed, especially from the backside. So that is the spook proof equation. And if you have seen that deer noticing your cameras, that might be one reason you need to up your trail camera game for 2022. So when you're back analyzing your trail camera photos for the year, there's nothing more frustrating than realizing that you got a bunch of pictures, but they're all of the rear end or the nose of the tips of antlers of a bunch of deer. And you may think this is caused strictly because of your trigger speed. And in some cases that may be true, but there's also some things that you need to understand about the detection angle of trail cameras, the detection circuit, and the field of view. So the issue that you may be experienced may be caused by the camera being too close to the actual subject, or the trail, the scrape, whatever it may be. So you have a deer coming into the detection area, the camera is triggered, and you're only getting the tips of the antlers. And why might that be? Well, if you think about the way the detection angle in the field of view of the camera work. It's kind of at, a, we'll use 45 degrees as an example, it's actually a little bit different, it's like 47, but just to use a one-to-one, -one, the detection area of that camera, of that lens is shaped kind of like a cone. So the further away within that detection zone, the subject is, the wider the field of view, the more likely you are to capture the entire 
deer or the entire animal. Keep that in mind when you're placing your trail cameras next fall because you're gonna wanna get your camera, if you're trying to run it on the same trail, the same scrape, you're gonna wanna back it up a little bit off that subject to make sure you are getting the most out of the data from that camera set. So the next thing that I'm looking for is trail camera sets that I had a lot of false triggers on and I haven't checked any of these cameras yet so I don't know if I'm getting a lot of false triggers but if you're experiencing a lot of false triggers with your trail cameras here could be why. Number one if the line of sight the field of view of the camera has anything blowing in the wind or close to the camera lens that can move and trigger that PIR it's going to trigger the camera that's the way the camera is designed to work. Also, if you have the camera pointing to the south and you're getting a lot of sun flares, you're going to get a lot of false triggers. The way the PIR sensors work, they are triggered by motion and heat. It's a change of motion, a change of heat. So for example, we get a lot of false triggers in the summer on our bean fields. And what's happening is the sun is heating up those beans the leaves the pods therefore causing a change the camera detects a change and takes a picture so analyze your sets make sure there's nothing in the field of view and keep in mind the direction you're facing your camera sun flares will cause false triggers the sun can also cause false triggers by heating up the field of view of your trail cameras. Another extremely frustrating thing as trail camera users, and this is even more frustrating for a cell camera user, is getting a bunch of photos of the same deer time after time after time and in one setting. So maybe this is on a food source or it's on a bait station or a mineral site. A lot of times deer are spending a lot of time in those areas. And if you're getting 45 photos of the same doe family group feeding, in a two minute span. One, with cell cameras that's costing you a lot of money. Two, as a standard SD card uh, user, trail camera user, you then have to sort through a bunch of photos of the same deer to find the one that you're actually looking for. So some of the reasons this may be happening, it's kind of self-explanatory. Number one, your trigger delay is too short. Number two, you really shouldn't be running a burst count on food sources or mineral locations if your goal is to not get a bunch of photos. If you're running video, shorten that trigger delay because at a bait station, especially in the early season or in the late season, those deer are gonna spend a lot of time in that area and you're able to gather a lot of data and you will have less frustration, less photos to sort through in those food source locations. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is image quality. Now, image quality is something that you may not think you can improve with the physical trail camera set, and that is incorrect. There are some things that you can do to improve the image quality from your trail cameras. And in the daytime, one thing you wanna be conscious of is lighting. So facing your cameras south is the worst way to face your cameras because you're gonna be facing directly into the sun. So that's gonna blow out a lot of your trail camera photos. The most optimal image quality comes from facing your cameras north. You're gonna get the best lighting possible if your camera is facing north for daytime images. Now, I understand that that might not be possible. You might have to have your camera in a certain place facing a certain direction to capture a certain trail. Just know that if you are in that situation and you're getting poor images, that could be why. As for nighttime images, there are some things to consider with your physical trail camera set. And the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind is having some type of reflective source. So when the camera is triggered at night, whether it's a black flash, red flash, or white flash camera, there is some type of light emitted. So if that light is emitted out to a food source or an ag field or an open field or an open area in the timber that light has nothing to reflect off of thus your image seems darker than it may if you have something in the field of view that can physically reflect that light back towards your subject now another thing to consider with nighttime photos is running your cameras on a burst count now 
This is something you wanna be careful of if you're running cell cameras because you're paying for that data. But one of the best ways to improve your nighttime photos with your trail cameras is to run a burst count. And the reason being, trail cameras operate on auto exposure tables. So there's nothing inside the ISO, the aperture, or any of those basic photography settings that you can change. What you can change is the burst count and the flash range. What you're doing is you're combating motion blur because that flash is being emitted over three, four, five, six photos, whatever your burst count is, rather than one. So the lens is capturing more light. The odds of capturing a crisp nighttime image without motion blur are a lot better on a burst count rather than on a single shot burst. So keep that in mind. The next camera setting that you can look at is your flash range. If nighttime photos are of high priority to you, run your flash range on a high on the highest setting rather than a low setting or medium setting, and that will improve your nighttime image quality. So the goal of this video isn't to tell you that you're doing something wrong. Rather, it's just to get you thinking a little bit more in depth about the physical trail camera locations, analyzing the photos, what are you getting, out of that physical trail camera set rather than just looking at the photos, scrolling through and going on to the next year. So if you learned something, give us a thumbs up. And if you like the content, smash that subscribe button.